I created this documentary because I believe that humans make many of our decisions based upon the fact that we are going to die someday. These decisions, questions, and fears linger in our subconscious our entire lives. Some of us feel it, some of us don't, and some of us just choose not to. Regardless, I believe that everyone has the ability to tap into this higher stream of consciousness by asking people one simple yet very complex question. How do you want to be remembered? It's a tough question, man. Because you think about, if I were to die today, what would I want to be remembered by? You know? If it's down the line, if you live a long, happy life, I want to be remembered a good husband, a good father, successful. But if it were today, if I were to die today, I'd want to be remembered as the guy who could elevate the spirit of a room. You know, he walks in, makes someone smile. Bring more happiness and sadness. Um, I like to make people laugh. Love to live, live to love. I don't know, man. Give me a second, I gotta think about it. If you can make a difference in one person's life, that's enough for me, man. Caring about others is more important than caring about yourself. Giving is better than receiving. Just to make other people happy. You know, if, if I were to die and someone thought about me, I would want them to think about one time that I changed their life in a positive way. I think that's really what it comes down to, man. I wonder, I wonder what you would do if you had the power to dream at night any dream you wanted to dream. And you would, of course, be able to alter your time sense and slip, say, 75 years of subjective time into eight hours of sleep. You would, I suppose, start out by fulfilling all your wishes. You could design for yourself what would be the most ecstatic life. Love affairs, banquets, dancing girls, wonderful journeys, uh, gardens, music beyond belief. And then after a couple of months of this sort of thing at 75 years a night, you'd be getting a little uh, taste for something different. And uh, you would move over to an adventurous dimension where there were certain dangers involved and the thrill of dealing with dangers. And you could rescue princesses from dragons and go on dangerous journeys. make wonderful explosions and blow them up. Eventually get into contest with enemies. And after you'd done that for some time, you'd think up a new wrinkle to forget that you were dreaming. So that you would think it was all for real and to be anxious about it. And then, uh, because it'd be so great when you woke up. And then you'd say, well, like children who dare each other on things, how far out could you get? What could you take? What dimension of being lost, of abandonment of your power, what dimension of that could you stand? You could ask yourself this because you know you'd eventually wake up. Then you would get more and more adventurous and you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And finally, you would dream where you are now. 
you would dream the dream of living the life that you are actually living today. That would be within the infinite multiplicity of choices you would have, of playing that you weren't God. Because the whole nature of the Godhead, according to this idea, is to play that he's not. So in this idea then, everybody is fundamentally the ultimate reality. Not God in a politically kingly sense, but God in the sense of being the self, the deep down basic whatever there is. And you're all that, only you're pretending you're not. Especially, man, with it's hard to leave a legacy nowadays with social media when you're posting. It's such a facade of people want to try and appear to be something else, you know. They share this, they post that, they say this, all to try and build an image of who they are, but and something as serious as like death, like if you're dying, it's not about what your status was two years ago, you know, it's about one-on-one -on -one interaction, human interaction, how you were in person how people looked at you and how you looked at other people, if you listened or if you just talked, you know. If you could give good advice, if you could make someone smile, if you could just make a small difference every single day, I think that's what, that's what is most important, man. Just being a good person. Uh, I'm a hardwood floor contractor, install sand refinish. I specialize in basketball courts and gymnasiums, but as you can see, I do residential as well. Uh, right now, I'm getting ready to put some espresso down on this light oak floor for uh, Mr. Smith. I mean, this has been like so many, um, there's so many routes you can go with this. I've taken a lot of different viewpoints and I've compiled them into one. You know, like I've heard this one thing, life is, you know, your turn, it's this long. And then, you know, your life in this flesh, it's like this long. And what you're doing this amount of time really affects all of this. And it's like, how do you want that amount of time to go for you? And, you know, uh, I feel like us as humans, we naturally take things for granted. And, you know, in life, really, all the little things you will manage your relationships, you love. Like, I have a daughter, she's five. And I'm going to be honest, I don't have the greatest relationship with her. But, I mean, I love her and I'll die for her, man. You know? And um, I can honestly say that. I just feel like, me personally, I don't want to leave this world with anything left in my tank. Like, I want to go out on zero. I want to know that I gave it my all and my effort, and I didn't follow the path that everybody else followed. Uh, I didn't do that cut and cutter stuff, you know? Like, you know, college is for people. Some people, they can do that, and I dropped out. That went for me. Uh, I took up a trade, thank God it came into my life, and I feel like I took advantage of it to the best of my ability. 25 years old, but one thing that um, it's tough, it's not easy at all. But I'm thankful for every day that I get to work because work's a blessing, truthfully. Like, you know, I always get this chance. So, me personally, I just want to seize every day like it's my last, and I want to I wanna give my all. I do anything. So, so, myself, you know, I've, I've had different experiences in life. You know, I grew up. I grew up in the hood, lowest poverty rate in Cincinnati. And I remember the first time, 13 years old, I see my first dead body, literally. And, you know, we moved in our the apartment complex that same night. There was bullet outlinings and blood markers on the side of the apartment complex. And, you know, by the age of 15, I was selling marijuana. Like, so it was, you know, I had a, within my early teens, it was a rough life. But, you know, thankfully, my mom, she saw a rough life. She stayed on me about my grades and everything. Um, I had a big brother who, he wasn't raised with us. My aunt raised him, and he was able to financially help my mom, and he helped her move out to Anderson. And, and you know, culture shock, total culture shock. And the only time I saw white people in the hood was either crackheads or police officers or suspended me from school once I got to high school. Um, when I came out here, man, it was a total different life. Uh, different, but definitely helped me become the person I am today. So I saw the best of both worlds. 
I saw the lowest poverty rate, and then I saw a sheltered society where, you know, being, being smart wasn't frowned upon, like it was actually encouraged, you know, raising a hand in class to answer, to ask a question, or raising a hand to answer the question, that was actually, you know, rewarded. So, you know, didn't have to worry about being a class clown or anything. So, as far as culture, I, I've seen the best of both worlds. And, you know, because of that, that shaped me to who I am today. You know, as I, as I stepped outside of Anderson Township and began to go to college and play ball and all that and just grow a little bit and just see life for what it really is to live and to learn. You know, I would say that although I came to Anderson, I was, I had help from my coaches and everything, but as far as learning life, like my coaches helped here and there, but I was on my own for the most part. I had great friends um, who helped out and welcomed me, but even in high school and college, but when I got there and got through college, you know, I graduated above a 3.0 because you know, I always wanted to set an example for my kids. I didn't want my kids to grow up the way I grew up, and I wanted to give them more, more to life. I want to go against the grain in every way. I want to be great in everything I do. My life motto is Yogo Whippy. Yogo Whippy, baby. Yogo Whippy. You, you only get out what you put in. You only get out what you put in. Alright, this is why every day we wake up, no matter what I'm doing, I'm, I'm a personal trainer, so I change people's lives, you know, I help, my specialty is people with diabetes, hypercholesterol, hypertension, and high cholesterol, and I, I just love changing lives, so everything that I put into it, I, I want to change lives, I want to say that I made a difference in somebody's life, and you know, the funny thing is, Ever since I started focusing on the spiritual aspect of life and applying biblical principles, I've been changing lives. And that's the crazy thing, like, like I've been changing lives. And For some, the question, how do you want to be remembered, seemed a bit difficult. So when talking to the younger kids, I felt it might be a little better to ask them more about growing up, the fears they face, what they think about when they're in school, and no one asks them the questions that many kids want to be asked. So I felt their perspective would help mold with the older generation of asking how do you want to be remembered by simply asking them what do you think about growing up? When I grew up I would like to be either a basketball player or own an NBA basketball team. Is there anything like you're most scared of or, or you know have fears about? Um like bills and taxes and stuff. I either want to become a baker or a cook. And what about, do you have any like anything that you're scared of growing up or are you? Um, car crashes, if that ever happens. That's... Do you know what you want to be when you grow up? Either a paleontologist or a magician. Do you, uh, do you have any like fears or things that you're, you're scared about? Death. Getting older? You know what I'm saying? Like, animals have souls, dude. Like, everything, we all share it. We're all made up of the same elements, the same everything. Like, I, I just, there's no way that we just die and that's it and go into the dirt. Like, this, this, our spirit passes forth. There's, a, there's an afterlife. There's something after this. You know what I mean? Like, I, there's way more to this than just what it is. It is. Bef all right. There's a reason for everything. I believe everything happens for a reason. And I spent my whole life searching for why are these things happening, not only to me, you know, I'm just, I'm a small, per, I'm a small percent, very small percent for as far as a nation, you know, I'm just one person.
and I just want to be remembered for always having a smile on my face and having a positive attitude. I like it, man. And so are you, you go to school around here? Or? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, cool. What year are you? What year? Yeah. What? Oh, you're 13. Yeah, I'm 13. So you're in what, 8th grade? Yeah, 7th grade. grade. You got a Nagel? Yeah, I got a Nagel. Nice, man. That's what's up. Well, thanks for being on.